Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is the beginning of the three part sew along for the McCall's 7945 summer dress that I am wearing here. So this was a vote on Patreon and it was the maxi dress version and this was the winning pattern that the Patreon peeps picked. That was a lot of peas in one sentence and I'm really glad that you guys did. I really liked the pattern envelope. I really liked the way that it looked on the model. I just, for some reason, when it came to making it for me, suddenly got the fear and I was like, oh my gosh, this is not gonna look good on me. What am I gonna do? I'm really glad that you guys pushed me outside of my comfort zone because I absolutely love it. I think it's really, really flattering. I will probably never wear it this way, which is with the waist ties undone. I mean, number one, because the waist ties are on there and they'd look really strange if they were just hanging loose. But I don't think I would ever make this pattern without those waist ties because this is me we're talking about and you know that I like to have some definition around my waist. It's a really, really easy pattern to make, but I did completely ignore <laughs> the pattern instructions and kind of made up my own way of putting it together because of the ways that I wanted to finish, specifically the seam here. They, the way that the pattern would have you do it, they are getting you to slip stitch that into place and that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with slip stitching. I just prefer mach machine finishes whenever I can because I feel it looks cleaner and it feels to me more secure. So that's the way that I have put this pattern together. For part one, we're going to be finding out how much ease they've built into the pattern, working out which size we need to trace once we've taken that into account and then altering any pattern pieces that we need to alter. For me, it was this bodice piece up here. I wanted it to be a little bit longer I've made this an inch longer and it's still sitting pretty much kind of three quarters of the way down my boobs but it's much better than if I hadn't have added the inch it would look a little bit stranger I think. I don't think I actually want to add any more length to it though I do like it as is. So let's get started. you will need your pattern, fabric, matching thread, matching bias binding, paper scissors, fabric scissors, pinking shears, pins, marking tool of choice, I'm using a friction pen, French curve, pencil, safety pin, you're also going to need some pattern making paper, ironing board, iron and sewing machine. Okay so the very first thing you want to do is iron your tissue, pa tissue paper nice and flat. I always trace my patterns, these patterns are really expensive in the UK and as lovely as it is that I have so many of you guys that are willing to smuggle these over from America for me, it, it's still buying two of these or just cutting into them, I just I can't bring myself to do it, I'm just going to trace it. It's an extra step but I really don't mind. I am using my tracing paper from Moreplan, I have a sheet over the black surface so that I can then put the tissue paper on top of that and then I'll put another layer of the tracing paper over the top of that. For me it works. Light boxes are a great idea. Somebody mentioned an A0 size light box. What ideally I would like to do is at some point in the future have a table that is giant and a complete light box that would be amazing but until that day i am going to stick with this if you struggle to see through tracing paper there is something called swedish tracing paper it's much easier to see through but it is much more expensive the roll of tracing paper i have is from Moreplan. it was 75 pounds for 300 meters and the last one lasted me around about three and a half four years so it is very good value for money swedish tracing paper is around about 15 pounds for 10 meters so it is much more expensive but you can sew swedish tracing paper so you can make your muslin direct up in the pattern that you've traced so there is that we now need to work out how much ease McCall's have built into this pattern and what size we need to trace so for me I need to trace according to the envelope a size 16 bust a size 12 for the waist and then a size 18 for the hips now I have the pattern bundle that goes up to the size 14 because I know that the the big four build in so much wearing ease to their patterns you can find the finished measurement on pattern piece number one and this is for the bust. My bust actually measures 37 so I need between the two of those but I would err on the side of caution but as I say it only goes up to the size 14. So this is a 36 inch bust and the finished measurement for the size 14 is a 40 inch bust. So there's four inches of wearing ease built into that. So I'm actually gonna drop down to the size 12 which is a 38 inch finished measurement which will give me one inch of wearing ease which is what I want because it's going to be so voluminous over my waist and hips I would like it to be much more fitted 
at the top. I think that's going to be something that works for me. So that's the bust measurement. If we swing over to pattern piece number two, that's where the waist measurements are. Coming back over here, according to this pattern, I need a size 12 in the waist and the size 12 over here is a 40 inch measurement so that is 14 and a half inches of ease now this is a relaxed fit dress but for me that is a little too relaxed fit so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to trace this size six which is a 36 and a half inch and that will give me 10 inches of wearing ease which is still an awful lot and i'm going to have the ties but this is the thing when i have the ties in this dress you can see here or here they are going to cinch it in for me much more but i don't want there to be so much fabric that it looks weird at the back so i'm going to go for the size six at the waist and it's pretty much free over the hips i can't find a hip measurement on any of these pieces so i am going to just go with the size six all the way down because i they've built so much ease into the waist it's going to be fine so the next thing that i like to do is i like to write myself a little note of all the pattern pieces that I need to trace out. Now for this one, the only difference is that for one of them you don't put the ties on and then for the other, the difference in the hem height. I want to actually trace every single pattern piece here. I am still gonna write these down and I'm gonna cross them off as I have traced them out because I have missed pattern pieces in the past. This is a way that I find helps me. And then this is what I've determined from looking at the envelope measurements and then the measurements for the finished measurements on the pattern pieces. So I'm gonna go for a size 12 bust size 6 waist. I was going to grade out to the size 14 for the hips but I think I'm going to stick with the size 6 for the hips because as I say there is so much wearing ease built into this I don't think that that's, I'm going to struggle with that and I think I probably would prefer a slimmer fit for this dress. So I'm going to start tracing out all the pieces now I'm going to trace the pocket piece which is pocket number 7. I'm not sure if I'm going to put pockets in this or not I am using a very lightweight rayon and I'm honestly not the biggest fan of pockets in dresses I like them as a statement as a feature like with the 8577 I very much enjoy those pockets and they are giant but I find side seam pockets tend to not be quite big enough and if I put anything in them they drag down the line of the dress so I'll trace it but I very much doubt that I'll actually include them in the making of the dress. So I've traced all my pieces out and I now want to add some length to it and there aren't any lengthening and short lines on the pattern because it is not something that they have included but I know for me personally I need to add length to the torso of most patterns to get them to fit me. I want to do it on the bodiced front because I find mostly with pattern, these kind of patterns that the if it's a if it's a bodice like this the seam line doesn't quite sit where my underwire sits for my bust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter pattern piece number one which I have here and then I also need to alter pattern pieces number four and five to correspond to the length that I'm going to add in here. I want to find out a place where I can add in the extra length the whole way across and looking at these patterns what I want to do is I'm going to do it just under the double notches that meet up for the the side seams because that seems like a really good place to add in the extra length that's not going to affect anything else too much and the way I've determined that is I have got my pattern pieces I have overlapped them all and kind of put them together so that I have the armhole here and I'm thinking that this is a nice point for me to do it. So that is marked on for piece number one and piece number five, but I'm gonna to need to make a registration mark on piece number four so that I can continuously add the extra length in at a pretty similar level. So what I've done is I have matched up the notches and I have also matched up the top of the shoulder seam here and wants to get away from me so I put a weight on it. So I'm not being too precious about getting this right, I just want to make sure that the shoulder seam is all nice and even at the top here. And then what I'm going to do is just under that double notch, I'm going to make a line through that pattern piece and then through this pattern piece. Now this one I have made it perpendicular to this cut on the fold line here. This one I may need to extend the grain line and then just actually make that line perpendicular to the grain line as well which is what I shall do now. And again I have no idea if this is the right way to do this sort of thing, it's just something that seems logical to me. So yeah that line that I drew wasn't quite perpendicular so I'm going to, from the bottom of the double notches with a perpendicular line through the grain line I'm going to draw that one in again so that's all going to work for me and then over here I'm going to draw a line across 
this piece just underneath the double notch mark there and the grain line on this piece is a bit different so I've just drawn a straight line and I'm gonna hope that works. So I'm now going to add in an inch of length to all three of those pieces in the same way that you've seen me do before. I will show you again though, in case this is the first sew along that you've seen. So let's get these out of the way for now. So I have scrap paper here from where I was cutting out the traced pattern earlier and I am going to draw a one inch rectangle and then I'm going to draw a line through that which will act as my registration mark. Now usually I would use the grain as the registration mark on the pattern piece but what I'm doing here is I am making a registration mark through the straight line that I have drawn on pattern piece number one and I am now going to cut through the length and the short line that I have added. I need sellotape. So bringing back the piece that I have drawn, the one inch rectangle with the perpendicular line in it, I'm going to line up the cut edge of my pattern piece and match up the right angle that I made on the pattern piece with the registration mark that I put on the one inch wide rectangle and stick that cut edge down along the bottom of that rectangle, making sure everything is lying nice and flat. I'm going to take the top edge of my pattern piece and put the cut edge against the top of the rectangle and again making sure everything is nice and straight and that the registration mark matches up. So now we need to smooth out these edges because we've got quite a big jog between this one and this one here. This one's not too bad so this one I'm just going to smooth out that edge. There we go. So this one, what I want to do is from the underarm seam, I kind of want to split the difference between the two. So I've taken a little bit away from the top there and added a little bit to the bottom. So I'm going to need to stick down this piece of paper to account for adding in that extra little bit. And now I can cut this out. Notches back in, because I'm going to be cutting those off. Take off. So there is my new front bodice pattern piece with an inch of length added. So I now need to do the corresponding adjustment to the back pattern piece so that I have something that is evenly lengthened the whole way around. And it's gonna be the exact same method. Scrap piece of paper, one inch rectangle, perpendicular line, cut my pattern piece in half, well, not half, but apart. Cut edge along the bottom of the rectangle, matching up the registration, making everything sure everything is straight. Second part of the pattern piece against the the cut edge against the bottom of or the top of your triangle. Uh, I don't keep calling it a triangle. The top of your rectangle, matching up the registration marks. And we need to smooth out those new lines. That one's easy. This one, just taking a tiny little bit off of the bottom. Number five done. They're the only alterations I'm going to do, so I'm going to start cutting out my fabric. As ever, if you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I will see you again very soon. Bye!